when we were out last week? I met this girl. Yeah, what about it? Well, she blocked me on Tinder. Hi, welcome back to my channel. So good to see you. How have you been? I missed you. I hate to admit it, but it's true. I did. Mm, yeah, I know. You missed me too, didn't you? Okay, well, you could have like at least lied about it. So my friends, this week we have a weekly reading vlog where I read books that you hate and that you think I'll hate. When I say you, I really mean like my patrons. <laughs> Basically, I asked my patrons to recommend me books they'll think I'll hate. That's what they did. And that's what I read this week. Anyway, the books I read are Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak. This is about a woman who is like a past drug addict. Why did I say that weird? <laughs> drug addict. And she starts a new job as a live-in nanny, but like the child that she's watching is like doing weird and creepy things. And so, you know, the story kind of goes from there. This is meant to be like a thriller slash like a horror novel. I'll also be picking up this book, which is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahorin. This is the first YA novel I've picked up in a while. But basically, this is about this girl named Louise. Louise is like a witch, right? But in this society, witches are like, good as dead like you might as well be good as dead like they hunt witches we're also following this guy named reed who is literally a witch hunter they end up having to be in like a marriage of convenience it's like forced proximity marriage of convenience and enemies to lovers finally we have this book which is never have i ever by jocelyn jackson this is a thriller novel this woman whose name is amy Amy has a monthly book club meeting with all of her little friends in her little neighborhood. And one day this new girl shows up. She's like, hey, I'm here for the book club. And they're like, who the fuck are you? And she's like, my name is Rue. And they're like, okay. And then Rue literally like, like usurps the book club in a way. Basically takes all of the attention and brings it towards her. And so Amy and the girl who runs the book club are like, you know? And then Rue approaches Amy and is like, by the way, um, I know your secret and I'm gonna tell everyone unless you give me a shit ton of money, okay? <laughs> and so Amy's like, ooh, yikes. Please let me know down below what books you think I'll hate and I might read them in my upcoming vlogs. You never know. Let me know if you have any recommendations because I think that could also be fun. I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. Uh, don't forget also to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit we talk about creepy shit we talk about never have i ever let's roll the clip oh jeremy jeremy no no jeremy you you're literally 40 minutes late i was literally about to get up and roll the clip myself i was literally like ask ask the people i was literally about to get up and roll the clip myself because you're so late where were you what do you mean hit by a car you, you look fine. There's no blood on you. You're not limping. What, what? Oh, you saw someone get hit by a car. Are they, are they dead? No, they're okay. They're not dead. They're, they're, they're fine. Okay. Well, well, are you ready? I mean, I don't know why you still came. Like you could have called. That's the thing too. Like you didn't call. It's like, it's kind of suspicious. Like, I don't know if I believe you. Either way, are you gonna, are you gonna work today? Okay. Okay, roll the clip. Roll the clip. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jer Bear. <laughs> Hi, welcome to this weekly reading vlog. It's Tuesday, happy Tuesday. How are you? How's it going? A few things have happened already. I know, the week's just starting, it's already happening. Kind of, not really, I mean, it's, <laughs> everything that's happening is kind of boring. So it's exciting for me. I don't think it's gonna be exciting for you. But anyway, I heard about this anime, right? Called My Love Story with Yamada-san level 999 i kept seeing it the commercials or like the little advertisements for it and i was like it looks so cute yesterday i watched it there's nine episodes out right now i think there's gonna be like 12 or 13. i binged all of them 
I'm obsessed with it. And then I was like, I need more. Like I need to know what's gonna happen. I need, I need, I need to know. So I went online and started reading the scanlations of the manga. <laughs> Is that what they call them by the way, scanlations? I started reading the manga online because it's not licensed in English for some reason. Like, I don't know why they haven't licensed it in English and released it, but whatever. I'm obsessed. I think I'm like halfway through. I think right now there's like 80 something, maybe 90 volumes and I'm like on like chapter 45. I love it. So I'm really excited to continue the anime and read the manga, but that's what I was reading yesterday. It really got me in the mood for romance. Where really they got me in the mood for cutesy lovey-dovey stuff. Specifically, like, anime, manga kind of lovey-dovey stuff. Which is, like, the men are just out of this world. Like, they're not human. Like, real men don't act like that. And that's what I wanted. I wanted, like, the fake shit. You know what I mean? So then after that, I read volumes 1 to 3 of In the Clear Moonlit Dusk by Mika Yamamori. These are, first of all stunning the artwork is absolutely stunning um and i i will say the story i'm hooked i'm hooked the next volume comes out june 6th which is like a week or so away i'm so excited the moment i get the fourth volume i'm gonna be reading it i really loved this i didn't expect to love it honestly the first the first volume like halfway through i was like this is like monday morning like i don't know if i feel this but actually um he was <laughs> i'm obsessed i can't wait to see what happens i i'm obsessed if you're into like shoujo sort of like high school romance type thing these are so good i really love them and the artwork is gorgeous and i feel like it's not very conventional like it has like some tropes but also has some other tropes that people don't usually use like if you've ever seen coffee prints this reminds me of Coffee Prince a little bit. This girl uh, is known as like the prince at her school because she looks like a boy. She's like taller and she has like a short haircut and she has like a deeper voice. And she's also very like princely. But then there's this other guy at her school who's also called a prince, but he's like a different kind of prince. He's like a bad boy prince, you know? He meets her and he's like, holy you're literally so beautiful and gorgeous. I could die right now. She's like, what the f And he's like, are you a boy? And she's like, what? Uh, he becomes like obsessed with her, right? Like he's like, I need to know everything about you. You're stunning. Please hold my hand. Like get, come closer, you know? And she's like, absolutely not. Like I want nothing to do with you. But slowly, you know, they get to know each other and he makes a joke being like, oh, we should date or whatever. And she's like, yeah let's date but it'll be like an experiment experiment of what i don't know but they start dating as an experiment and it's listen i'm it's a it's a hook line sinker for me i'm hooked i'm lined i'm a sinker is that is that like what people say i don't know i'm i'm really really happy with these though so i've been in my shoujo era um <laughs> maybe even like jose era i just want to see people fall in love. That's all I want. But you might have also read the title of this video, which I think is going to be like reading books you think I'm going to hate or something like that. So I've been on Patreon, which by the way, if you haven't joined my Patreon, you might want to consider it. It's actually quite fun. It's actually quite nice. We do reading sprints. There's early access to videos like these ones or even more exciting ones like, um, you know, early access to book hauls, shopping adventures, etc., etc. Um, and then also on the Patreon, we have like ex patron exclusive reading vlogs. Like I just did a reading vlog for any man that's only on the Patreon. You can't see it on YouTube. It's like literally illegal on YouTube. I mean, it's not illegal on YouTube. It's like illegal for you to see it on YouTube. Anyway, it's everything. Please, if you want to support me on Patreon, I would appreciate it so much. It means so much to me. Um, and I would love to have you. We have a lot of fun on Patreon. Anyway, somebody on my Patreon, Joni actually, to be specific, who is literally an angel. Hi, Joni. Um, she said that she doesn't think I'll like this because uh, it is apparently transphobic. And that is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekulek. Transphobia? Absolutely not. Doesn't fly in this house. I hate that. I've honestly heard that from a few people that this book has some 
trans transphobic vibes we don't love that jason jason we don't love it i'm going to read it in this vlog and we're gonna see what we think joni literally said like drag her <laughs> joni literally said get her jade like <laughs> i'm excited to read it because i have heard good things but also i'm i'm a bit apprehensive because if it is transphobic jason you're f you're f I do remember when this came out, everyone, everyone and their mom and their dog and their dad and like their dead grandma was like obsessed with it. I think I'm gonna start with this. And then I was also thinking, and this is crazy because I know I'm not like, I'm not like a big thinker. Denise Diamond literally just said, never have I ever. I think I own that book. I'm gonna have to check, but I'll do that in a second. Right now we have to talk about a touch of Jen. Back when I was doing my Patreon only like Spooky Smart Bitch Light readathon, one of the prompts was to read like the lowest rated book on your TBR. And I was talking to my patrons about it one day on like on like live. They said that like for sure a touch of Jen is like the lowest rated thing. And like a lot of them were like, it was weird, it was bad, I didn't like it. Um, and so I know for a fact that many of them think I'm going to hate this <laughs> because they've told me. <laughs> so I'm also going to add this to my TBR. This is about a girl named Jen who is like an influencer and it's about these other people who are obsessed with her. I'm going to go try to find Never Have I Ever. I'll be right back though. I do own it. I literally own it. Denise said Never Have I Ever and then she has like a puking emoji. <laughs> it seems like Denise hated it. And so she thinks I'm gonna hate it. At least that's what I'm getting from the puke emoji. <laughs> so I think I'm also gonna add this to my TBR. I'm surprised I didn't get rid of this. I think the reason I didn't though, honestly, is because the cover has these cute little houses on it. It says, in this game, even winning can be deadly. We're gonna read these this time. So thank you so much to Joni and to Denise for recommending them i appreciate it so much uh, you're the best i'm also gonna film today so i'm gonna start getting ready um and put makeup on and stuff like that because i'm gonna be filming my tbr and also i think the intro to this video and then also an, an, an intro to another video so anyway i'll see you later okay tiffany bye Since I've last spoke to you, I've had a few more people on my Patreon let me know what they think I should read. So, so Jamie thinks I'm not gonna like Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. Megan thought I wasn't gonna like White Horse. I'm gonna add these to the TBR though for potential books to read. There's a lot of books here. Jamie Hayden, another Jamie, a different Jamie, Jamie said I wasn't gonna like Docile or The Book of Accidents. Interestingly, I literally almost started this like a few days ago. I was like very indecisive about like what I wanted to read. So I was thinking about starting this. And then Mesa, Mesa, is that how you pronounce it? Please correct me if I'm wrong. She said that I wasn't gonna like The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. She said that she got sucked in by the cover and by like how like sort of vibrant it is, but that it was just a huge disappointment. So she thinks I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like this. And then Joni, I think might be like a long time, a long time viewer. If you are Joni, thank you so much. Cause she said, I feel like you talked about Jay, Jay Kristoff years ago, but I can't be sure. I saw Never Night and The Empire of the Vampire. The only other author I see is Patrick Rothfuss, The Name of the Wind, and he can be problematic depending on who you ask. Others can chime in more because I haven't read them. I only kind of know them. She brought up Jay Kristoff. I have read the first two books in the Never Night series. I read, I read them probably like three or four years ago at this point. Like it was a while ago. I think it was like one or two years after I read the second book that everybody started talking about how like problematic he is. And then Empire of the Vampire came out. Let me grab it actually. Let me just grab it. Two camps when this book came out. Some people were like unhappy with how Jay Kristoff handled the uh, cultural aspects of the book. I think. 
if I'm if I'm wrong, please correct me. I think the issue was that the way he wrote certain things or the way that he researched them was inappropriate or problematic. But then other people like absolutely lived and died for this. Like they were dying over it. I am gonna add this to my TBR because it seems like Joni thinks that I won't like it because Jay Kristoff is like a shit person, I guess. I mean, I don't wanna say shit person. Eh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I have so many books for this TBR. Um, so many of my patrons absolutely oh, came through. Like they came through for me. Like, oh my God, thumbnail. I wanted to mention, I was on Scribed or Scribd and I couldn't find hidden pictures there for free and my library doesn't have it either. And I don't want to waste an Audible credit on it. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, Tiffy, I don't want to waste an Audible credit on it. I feel like starting the vlog with this book would be like a good omen, you know what I mean? Like Joni, Joni set it out first. She was like, this book. I mean, I do have a three Audible accounts. <laughs> I'm gonna read this one first. I'm gonna read this one. Before I get ready, while I'm waiting for my, my hair to dry, which looks absolutely wild. I, I look like, I look like Steve from Stranger Things. <laughs> my face is so red too, oh my God. Also, I'm breaking out. I have like all of these zits. It's not cute. This is gonna be the longest vlog if I could just keep talking your ear off. Anyway, let me just get to the point. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna read a few pages from this um, before I start getting ready just so I can get like a, like a feel for it. Cool, okay, bye. You and I, we never show emotions, we just keep it down, down inside. Yeah, you and I, both longing for expression for Macmillan Audio presents Hidden Pictures by Jason McCulloch. Read by Susie Jackson. Wednesday. I am about, I want to say maybe like 70% of the way through Hidden Pictures. I have about two hours of the book left. So I'm going to finish it today. We also got more suggestions from my patrons for books that they think I'm not going to like. For example, Jesse said that I'm not going to like, like a sister. We were never here. Serpent and Dove trilogy, which I'm surprised because I kind of feel like I'm going to like that, but who knows? Curse of the Reaper, A Flicker in the Dark, and again, The Last House Guest. Jesse has pretty good taste, and I feel like we have like very similar taste as well. She's kind of on the nose. Like I feel like I trust her, you know? Dawn also said that she doesn't think I'm gonna like Bad Cree. She also doesn't think I'm gonna like She Drives Me Crazy, which is like a queer young adult book. And then she said that she seconds the Megan Miranda book because she used to enjoy her stuff, but not so much anymore. Oh, oh, and then Patty, Patty literally said, A Touch of Jen by Beth Morgan. Love or hate, there is no in between. I think Patty thinks that I'm going to like Touch of Jen. I'm not sure what I want to read after Hidden Pictures, but either way, I'm going to keep reading this. So far, I'm going to say it's fine. Like, I'm not living for it. But I'm also like not mad at it so far either. But also people keep, cause I'm also doing reading sprints right now with my patrons saying like, can't wait to see your reaction at the end of it or whatever. So I'm assuming there's something that happens at the end that's not great. So I'm a bit apprehensive when it comes to that. <laughs> but what I will say is um, the book has like a weird vibe. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Okay, I don't want to be like that girl. Um, but I'm not particularly religious and what i'm and i mean like i'm not religious at all like i'm an atheist i don't believe in any gods um so this book is a bit weird it gives me kind of like the ick like it's giving me like good christian woman kind of vibe. but 
feels a bit preachy for me at least i feel like there's like a very thin line with authors that uh when it comes to religion in books the main character is like i believe in jesus and Jesus is my senior, well, whatever. She went through the AA program and she, apparently she found her higher power in Jesus Christ, which is like, whatever, that's fine. Cool, good for you. Good for you, girl, you better work. But it's just like her, her sort of like, I guess judgment of the family. Cause the family is like, we don't want our child to be uh, introduced to religion like we're not interested in that like we're not religious we don't want to we don't want to have him be exposed to it this like this young I don't know which is like fair it's your fucking kid but like who cares but I feel as though the main character is like super super judgy and I feel like the main character is almost like an extension of the author and I feel and I keep feeling like it's the author's judgment <laughs> maybe I'm crazy maybe maybe I'm seeing things maybe I'm not exposed enough to this but it comes up like a lot her belief in Jesus Christ <laughs> comes up a lot and it's a lot like if I wanted to know about Jesus Christ bitch I'd read the Bible like I don't need this but thank you so much the neighbor Mitzi the one who smokes a lot of weed and like all that other stuff you know a tarot card reader or whatever everyone in the book is like so judgy of her <laughs> Like, listen, I get it. Because she also seems kind of like a douchebag. Like, she seems like a fucking asshole, to be honest. But, like, I think it's, I think it's ironic for them to be like, to be like, we don't judge. And, like, you know, everybody has struggles. Blah, blah, blah. And then when it comes to Mitzi, they're like, they're like, her stupid, dank ass. Her beliefs are so fucking dumb. I feel like the main character judges the family for not believing in Jesus more than they judge her for believing in Jesus. Like... I don't know. I'm I'm not feeling the I'm not feeling the vibe. Like it's not giving me like good feelings. Do you know what I mean? I'm so curious though to see like what exactly about this book is transphobic. I keep trying to like read into things and like see if I can like, you know, guess and like literally nothing. I feel like there was something about Teddy that was said or mentioned, but I literally can't remember it right now. But only thing I can really guess is that maybe Teddy is like a trans boy, but I have no idea. I have no idea. Either way, so far it's fine. I'm not living, I'm not laughing, I'm not loving. The religion aspect is like, it's too much. I feel like any book that mentions religion, I just, I just immediately, I'm like, ugh, get out of here. I felt very similarly about Imaginary Friend by Stephen Jabosky. That book was so preachy. That book was so like, trust in your savior, Jesus Christ. And like, listen, I have no problem with Jesus. Like Jesus seemed great. He was, he, he seemed like a very nice white man. I'm not interested. <laughs> These kinds of things, are, they're just, it's not for me. Anyway, I've talked about this for so long. I'm gonna go because I want to keep reading. I'm gonna finish this today and then we're gonna move on to our next book, which I don't know what is going to be yet. Maybe I'll ask Instagram or like my patrons to choose. Like I'll put up like a poll. Anyway, okay, bye. I'll be stuck in my head. the twist. I 
hate it. I hate it so, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it so much. Jason, Jason, if you're watching this, please, kindly, go fuck yourself. What? Also, I made like a little, tiny little charcuterie plate. Yeah, she's fancy, it's no big deal. I don't wanna say anything, cause I don't wanna spoil anyone. But when people say it's transphobic, um, they do mean it's transphobic. What are you trying to say, Jason? What's the point, hmm? Like, I don't wanna threaten you, cause I have a knife, but what's the point, hmm? What's the point, Jason? Jason, I'm sorry. <laughs> How, how fitting is it that a guy named Jason <laughs> wrote this book? <laughs> My camera's about to die. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I did finish Hidden Pictures and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. I hated it. Okay, okay, okay. I have, I have many things. I have many, many, many things to say. First of all, Mallory as a main character, dumb as fuck. She's so fucking dumb. There's so many instances where Mallory will just say things and it's like, do you have no common, you have no common sense. No common, she's so, f oh my gosh, she's so dumb. Wasn't a fan of Mallory. While reading it, I really felt like Jason uh, was making all of these like jabs at like people who are like left or like center leaning. I was like, no, I'm like crazy. I'm fucking crazy. But I'm like reading reviews on Goodreads of, and there are other people who are like, who are noticing it as well. So I'm not fucking crazy. Like this person on Goodreads, Bethany, beautifully bookish Bethany. She said, it's filled with conservative dog whistles, thinly veiled references to anti-trans rhetoric about trans kids and more than one positive reference for JK Rowling and Harry Potter. Plus fat phobia, racist stereotypes, and a whole lot of pointed jabs at leftists and atheists. That's exactly fucking it, okay? Bethany hit the nail on the head. Like, I hate it. I hate it so much. The whole book feels preachy. It seems like, okay, and this is crazy. It seems like Jason's trying to be like, no, I'm a good guy. I'm good, I'm a good guy. But then there's all these little tiny hints of him just being like, shit. <laughs> I mean, not even just like with his writing style, which is like absolutely abhorrent. Like he's, he sucks at writing. I'm so sorry to say this to you, Jess. Jason, you suck at writing. You're not good. You're not good. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. There's so many moments where there's just like these little tiny little pinpricks. And it's like, okay, well, that kind of hurt, but like maybe it was just like a one off. But it just keeps happening. The whole fucking book, the whole book that he's needling you. He's needling you. The fat phobia. The fat phobia. In 2023? Are we serious? We're gonna do this, Jason? So Mallory's mom is heavy set, right? She's like, she's fat. And Mallory, throughout the book, will say like, f like weird, rude things about her mom. Reading it, I was like, okay, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's like nothing crazy. But then, like, there was one part where I was like, oh, and okay, so you're for sure fat phobic. <laughs> Mallory is talking about, like, how she was in the throes of her addiction to heroin and to uh, opioids. Her mom wanted to help her, but Mallory was like, I'm a thin, athletic woman, and you're lazy and fat, so it's not even possible. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? What? What does that even mean, Mallory? Mallory, what does that even mean? I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> it's fat phobic as fuck. Like she's like, she's like, you can't help me because you're fat. And like she literally hates her fucking mom because she's fat. Any single time, every single time her mom comes up, it, she hates her because she's fucking fat. She's fucking fat, so of course she hates her. Like why wouldn't you hate your mom if she was fat? <laughs> Duh. Makes sense for Mallory and Jason. <laughs> oh, this, I hate it. I hate it. Like listen. You guys were right. <laughs> like to, to all of my patrons who were like, you're gonna hate this. You're right, I fucking hate it. I hate it. The ending, first of all, the ending was so messy and so stupid and none of it made any fucking sense. None of it made any fucking sense. I hate it so much. 
I'm glad that I didn't spend that much time reading this book. To be honest, like towards the end, I was really skimming. I was like, we gotta get this over with quickly, quickly. Zero to 10, would not recommend. I literally don't know what I want to read now though. So I don't know. I think I might put like a poll up on my Patreon maybe. We'll see, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what I want to read. I'll update you though when I do know what I want. But um, Jason, Mallory, <laughs> you can suck a dick. You can suck a dick. Please, a big old bag of them. Just a big burlap sack of dicks, just for you. That's all. <laughs> You're the opposite of me, like sun and rain. And drama on the TV. It's full of pain But we're the good part, the happy ending Unexpected plot twist, we always say me We're the good part, we never fake it Even if it hurts, we always say it Thursday. How's it going? How are you? I hope you're doing well. A few things, a few updates, okay? Number one, I started Serpent and Dove. And again, this is a reading vlog where I'm supposed to read books that you guys think I'll hate. So the fact that I literally love this so much is quite, it's, it's surprising to me. Like I am obsessed with this. I read about half of it so far. I was up until about five o'clock in the morning last night 
just binge reading this like just binging it like I didn't even notice either like it was one of those things where like I looked outside and it was like getting light out and I was like what fucking what the fuck what time is it and it was like 5 fucking 30 so yeah I'm literally gonna sit down and finish this like right now after I finish talking to you I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna snuggle up with it like okay and if you're like why why do you like it so much let me tell you Tiffany I love the fact that it's like a fantasy slash like romance thing but I not only that but like I also love the fact that it's so unabashedly tropey I don't love it because it's like a serious novel with like blah 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 you know no I love it because it's not that serious and it's like kind of ridiculous it's basically like a witch and a witch hunter uh having a marriage of convenience kind of thing <laughs> and then also you may have seen my uh tbr where i talked about wanting to read like romance with like bodyguard type things and I, like one of the characters gives me such bodyguard vibes that i'm i'm so happy i'm so happy i think also it's the fact that i'm in such a mood where like i'm really craving like romance right now and so like the ridiculousness of this and like the <laughs> the chemistry, <laughs> the romance. <laughs> it's like it's everything. It's everything I want. I'm not even gonna lie. It's everything I want, Tiffany. It's everything. Our main characters. They were in like a movie theater, and like <laughs> he was literally just like he was literally just like massaging the back of her hand lightly with his thumb, and I was like. <laughs> Lay me to rest, I'm done. <laughs> this is what romance does to people, you know? It just gets us all fucked up. I'm, I'm fucked up. I'm interested to see what happens. I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm so excited to continue on with it. And I'm so surprised, honestly, also. I'm okay, first of all, I'm surprised that it won because basically what I did yesterday was I put a poll on my Patreon with all of the books on my TBR and this won, surprisingly, which I'm really, really glad for. And I'm surprised also that it's so good. It, it's so good. Like I was expecting it to be good, honestly, cause that's why I bought it. I, I bought it cause it, it seemed like it was gonna be cute, but it's like so good. And then also the audiobook is really, really good. At least in my opinion, the woman who's narrating the audiobook, stunning, superb. The dude, I could do without. I could do without his voice. I wish they had chosen a different like actor or narrator but the woman who's who's uh, narrating our louise what a fucking twist honestly from going from like going from like subtle bigotry to like just the bet like a five star potentially a five star read potentially five stars it's crazy it's literally wild tiffany i'm gonna finish this tonight and i don't know what i want to read next i don't know i do want to find something though that i can read with by t by the end of tomorrow I just made hummus. My first time ever making hummus. <laughs> Don't want to brag, but I'm basically uh, a chef. I made a sun-dried tomato hummus. My first time ever making hummus, and it's so good. I'm a bit full. <laughs> I'm also, I think, gonna make sunflower seed butter eventually within the next maybe like day or two. So I might do that. I was also thinking, and this is crazy, but hear me out. I was also thinking I might go grocery shopping tomorrow. Cause I don't have any food, but I also need to think about recipes I want to make. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna go cause I want to read my book. So, bye. They keep on telling lies That is how we stay alive mm. So you know that I don't mind About what is wrong Right. We keep moving in different rhythms Still I know what you feel We keep moving in different rhythms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two different minds Telling lies That's how we stay alive
happy Friday. A few updates, a few little things. <laughs> First of all, I finished Serpent and Dove last night. And I absolutely loved this. Like, I loved it. Like, I was... <laughs> I'm a sucker. I'm not even gonna lie to you, Tiffany. I'm a sucker, okay? I realized while reading this that I am, um, is this lighting weird? I realized while reading A Serpent and Dove that I'm a sucker for, first of all, like a slow burn romance, but that wasn't really like a secret. I already knew that. But I, what I love, also enemies to love. Like I feel like, okay, and, and like, okay, I'm just gonna ramble, okay? I feel like this is, everything that I like about romance novels. Enemies to lovers, slow burn, forced proximity, marriage of convenience, like that. Like it's got everything, it's got everything that I love, you know? Not only that, but like both of the main characters are like absolutely bad bitches. And I'm, I'm obsessed. And then also, it kind of also has that like bodyguard trope like I was mentioning yesterday where it's like, he's like, he's like, you know, fucking six, eight and like huge. And she's just like tiny and little and petite, like me. <laughs> and so like, I just, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my God. There's a sex scene in this book. I was like, I was expecting it to be like a YA kind of thing, you know, for it to be like, you know, oh, and then, you know, he went further down and then fade to black, you know? No. That is not what happened. <laughs> that is not what happened, Tiffany. No, no, no. It wasn't like super spicy. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, his big fat cock or no, no. It was like, oh, the length of him. She said things very, very subtly, but still. <laughs> reading it, this was, this, this was my exact, exact expression while reading it. I think overall I would give it four stars because the ending for me, it was just like a little bit drawn out. The climax of the novel happened and then it was, it seemed like a long time between like the climax and the ending. Excuse me. Ending was a bit drawn out, but other than that, I loved it. I loved it, which like <laughs> kind of surprising because I didn't expect to like love it as much. I expected it to be like, eh, whatever, you know? But I think also what it could be is that I'm in such a mood for romance right now. Like I'm, I'm in the mood for romance. I want to see people fall in love right now. That's like my vibe. So I don't think everyone is gonna love this, but for me right now, right here, fucking obsessed, obsessed. So after I finished that, I was like, okay, let me just like chill out for a bit. But then eventually I got kind of bored again. So I was like, I should choose another book. So I decided to pick up Never Have I Ever by Josh, Jocelyn Jackson. This is a thriller novel that a few patrons were like disappointing. Uh, Denise said, never have I ever puking emoji. And then Dawn said that uh, never have I ever was one that I saw that made me post that comment. What a dud. A few people were like, no, it's not good. Um, I am, ex I feel like the outside world for some reason, like the moment I get on camera, the outside world is like, what if this was our moment? What if this, this is your moment, have it. <laughs> I am 130 pages into Never Have I Ever. And okay, a few things. First of all, I kind of like it. <laughs> Once again, I know. <laughs> I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Like, I kind of like it. First of all, I am obsessed with uh, Josh Jocelyn. I hate that name, by the way. I'm so sorry, Jocelyn. I am obsessed with her writing style. A lot of thrillers that I've read are kind of, I don't know. I feel like they're like dumbed down. I like, I feel like they're meant for like reading comprehension of like grade four, grade five. This I feel like is at least reading comprehension of like grade six, <laughs> at least. It has kind of a more poetic, symbolic, it's a, it's a bit more flowery, which I do prefer, honestly. And I like the discussion that it's having. At least I hope the discussion it's having. If it's not going where I think it's going, then, then that's kind of fucked up. Maybe the people on my Patreon are talking about like, the bad vibes, I guess, maybe, or like maybe the ending. 
Okay, so I've also kind of been like a bit of a funk today. Like I got up and I was like, oh, I should, I should like edit and blah, 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 blah. I didn't do any of that. Instead, I was just like looking online. Years ago, back in the old days of my booktube channel, I would read a lot of like independent horror. And I kind of want to get back to that. Like I kind of miss finding little gems. You know what I mean? Uh, in independent horror. I honestly just like don't know where to start. Also because I'm not, like, I know this could be offensive, so I'm sorry if it is, but like, I feel like the things that are coming out in terms of horror for 2023, or at least like the traditionally published horror that's being released, I'm not feeling it. Like I'm not excited uh, literally about anything. Like, or we're okay, no, that's not true. Most things I'm not excited for. I'm like, this is all fucking Monday morning. And I think also what it is, and like this could just be me. <laughs> when I when I see horror written by men, I'm like literally not interested. <laughs> I know, and I know that sounds bad, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. Literally, I'll see a horror book, and I'll be like, oh, that's a cool title, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll look at the, and it'll be like, it'll be like Ken Smith, and I'll be like, nah. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know what it is. Horror for me right now is just kind of. Do you know what I mean? I want to find something that can like spark my interest. Do you know what I mean, darling, Tiffany? I want something that's gonna like, you know, pump up my blood or whatever. That's not, that's not a saying that anyone ever says. But anyway, so I want to get back more. I want to get more into independent horror. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments down below. Please, I'm begging you. Yeah, I also, I have to edit my June TBR because uh, I want to post it soon. So I have to edit. I'm probably going to do that for maybe like an hour or so. And then I, I told myself also, like, if you edit for an hour, you can order food. So I'm going to stick to that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself work and then reward myself with, you know, things so i'm gonna do that um i don't know if I, I don't i really don't know if i'll be able to finish never have i ever in this reading vlog but i'm gonna try to so cool good talk <laughs> this has been like literally forever for what for what <laughs> like anyway okay i'll see you soon wish me luck hi okay so it is literally like two weeks later um i don't know why i didn't i never said I never told you, I never ended this vlog. I never like filmed an outro. So just wanted to let you know, I got 129 pages into Never Have I Ever and I and I put, and I put DNF'd it, I DNF'd it. Like it was fine, it was fine, but I'm not living. I'm not laughing, I'm not laughing. The writing was stunning, but there was nothing about it that was like keeping me tethered to it. So I DNF'd it. But my friends, my family, my family, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. I appreciate you so much if you watched it all the way through. Just say hi to Jeremy in the comments. He's been under like a lot of stress and like I, you saw earlier like he was literally like there's something going on. I don't think he actually saw anyone get hit by a car. I think he literally made that up. And like I don't want to say that he's like an un that he's like a uh, uncontrollable liar, but like. <gasps> So just, so just just say hi to Jeremy for me. I would appreciate that. Uh, don't forget also, of course, to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. Talk about creepy shit. Talk about uh, Jeremy and shit. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Au revoir. Toodaloo. Goodbye.